Thank you, Miss Amanda. That was beautiful. Man, I tell you, I'm just overwhelmed. I, I, uh, I was just sitting here thinking, preacher, I'd love to have one of those time-lapse cameras that would just sit here over the years when this was just nothing and then the buildings were built and people would come in and get saved and baptized and all the preachers that were standing here throughout the decades and just see the whole thing transpire. You know, those time-lapse cameras where the sun comes up and goes, wouldn't that be something? Man, I tell you, I just, I'm so thankful to be part of the family of God. Amen. Amen. Jen, I got to thinking about you. And man, I tell you, there won't be no wheelchairs in heaven. Man, you and Gene, I remember when you all first came, you were the only two singles we had in our singles class. And man, you guys would come in there and I'd come visit you to encourage you, and you end up encouraging me. And man, I just, just thank you for, for all of that. Man, I, I hope this message comes across the way, I, the way God put it in my heart. I'm kind of scatterbrained today, and I'm, I'm nervous, and I, and I pray that this is, this is a blessing to you. Um, Genesis chapter 2, Lee, I think you're going to have twins too, brother. I really do. Triplets. I was laughing. My wife, my wife got tickled. She said, here come... Uh, Jen and Miss Westbrook, each one of them had a baby, and then here come Chris. He had two carriers, two diaper bags, both of their pocketbooks, and he's coming out to church. I thought, brother, you, you have no idea. You just... <laughs> oh, it's great. I love it. God is good. God is good. I'd encourage you to get to know somebody that you don't know in church. I mean, I got the opportunity to spend some time with Will. One night here we was having a, a prayer meeting for a preacher right before we went into surgery, and him and I kind of hung around and talked. And I tell you, brother, I, I, I've got a love for you now and a respect. This man's been through it. And he began to tell me his story and so much that's transpired in his life. 
and uh, stage three brain cancer and, and you know, lost his parents at a young age. And he began to tell me he had some hurts with some recent relationships, you know, and then, but he gives God the glory. And he volunteers here a lot. And, and man, recently God came through. He was able to refinance his house. He went through and had an MRI and he's clear bill of health for now. And today his ex-wife and his son came and got saved. Oh man, he was riding back on my bus, man, telling me all this. And I tell you, I got so excited. I just began to think of the goodness of God. And man, I tell you, it's awesome. It's, 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 it's just unbelievable what God will do if we'll just wait on him and see what he has for us. Brother Ray, that was awesome this morning. Man, I, man I'm so glad to have you. I tell you, your daddy's proud of you. He's a good soul. And I remember when he came to preach for us, I thought, man. And then when I heard you were coming, but brother, that's just awesome. Keep doing what you're doing. Verse 17 in chapter 2. I've been studying the dynamics of what we are, you know, and just kind of milling around with the battle between God and Satan and the soul of men and, and all of that that goes on. And it's just so much uh, that in our finite minds we cannot understand. Uh, but God's Word is just amazing. It's truth. It's how it interprets itself, how it just, if you just allow it to work. Uh, it's, it's just awesome. Verse 17, But of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Let's pray. Father, we do love you. Father, heaven's going to be so awesome. Lord, just the sea of faces that were just blood washed and redeemed. Sinners saved by grace, Lord, praise in Thee. Lord, no more wheelchairs, no more MRI machines, Lord, no more waiting for results, no more heartache, no more death. Father, I pray that we'll keep our eyes fixed on Thee. I pray that we'll keep on keeping on. Lord, I thank You that we're a soul one in church, such a giving church, such a loving church. I pray You bless Your people as You have. Lord, it's so great to have our preacher here today. Lord, heal him up quickly. There's much to be done. His mind runs a million miles an hour. Lord, I pray you give him uh, the physical health to do what you'd have him to do. And Lord, be with us for the next few minutes. Lord, help us to get something from thy word. In Jesus' name, amen. I often wonder why God put this tree there. And I think what we need to realize first is not necessarily how we see each other, but how God and Satan see us. So I need Micah, I need Adam, and I need Wade. Come up here, guys, real quick. You've got to understand how God and Satan sees us to really kind of understand the battle and the struggle. Grab those boxes over there. Hey, buddy, no fooling around, right? You promised me. All right, let's see. You stand here, just close this. Come here, Mo. You stand here and you hold this box. Get in front of it like this. Hold it like this. You're right here. You're right here. The body's made up of three parts. What are they? The body, soul, spirit. And this is how we see a person. We just see what? We see a body. A fine specimen of a body we got right here in Micah. But open that box, and this is what God sees, and this is what Satan sees. Inside the body is what? Come here, buddy. You hold this box right here. Chancho, come here. That's my nickname for him, Chancho. You old spirit. That don't spin the spirit around, son. <laughs> A little nervous. Wade's just like his mom. He gets crazy and his hope's got to be the center of attention, loud, obnoxious, uncouthful. <laughs> right, son? 
Chapter 3, verse 19 in Genesis. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return into the ground, for out of it wast thou taken. From dust thou art, unto dust thou shalt return. What is that? That's the body. That's him. God really takes no value to the body, eternal value. Um, it's just a vehicle. It's, it's just... Um, we focus, and it's no, it's no mistake that the world and Satan focuses so much on the looks and the body. There's nothing wrong with taking care of yourself. You know, I'm not saying anything like that. But the emphasis uh, need not be on the body spiritually from a spiritual standpoint. Satan doesn't really care about the body. But we're trained in the world. That's all we see is the body. That's all we know is the body. Um, verse 7 in chapter 2, the first part of verse 7, it said, And the Lord God formed man out of what? Out of the dust of the ground. It's where we came from. He created heaven and earth. What's create mean? He means to, take some, to make something from nothing. Amen. But he formed man out of something that he already created, which was a dirt. Yeah. Your dirt, man. <laughs> Matches your shirt and your tie. Earth tones. Then we see the soul. Man, that's a bright watch. I like that. We see the soul. Look at verse 7, part B. And breathe into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. Man became a living soul. We're going to do a little scripture jump in here, so stay with me. Leviticus chapter 17. We'll start in verse 11. For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. Therefore I said unto the children of Israel, No soul of you shall eat blood, neither shall any stranger that sojourn among you eat blood. And whatsoever man there be of the children of Israel, who of the strangers that sojourn among you, which hunteth and catcheth any beast or fowl that may be eaten, he shall even pour out the blood thereof and cover it with dust." For it is the life of all flesh, the blood of it is for the life thereof. Therefore I said unto the children of Israel, Ye shall eat the blood of no manner of flesh, for the life of all flesh is in the blood thereof. Whosoever eateth it shall be cut off. So I think we can establish that the life is in the blood. And, you know, I, I don't know of anybody that eats blood or has a craving for blood other than Hollywood and the Twilight people and all the vampires that are so popular now. It's probably no coincidence that they live on blood. Might be something to that. I don't know. But life is in the blood. Look at Acts chapter 17. How are you guys doing? Doing all right? Acts chapter 17, look at verse 26. So God breathed the breath of life into Adam, and life is in the blood. And look, look what happens here. And hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth, and hath determined the times before appointed and the bonds of their habitation. What's that mean? We are... Adam passed life unto us through what? His blood. We all, Adam is our earthly father, correct? We've all come from that. And we've, 
God did not individually breathe the breath of life into every one of us. It was passed on. Does that make sense? And that's how life was passed down. So that's the soul. Then we see the spirit. Uh, look at John chapter 4, verse 24. This could get so deep, but you guys know me. I'm not that deep. Uh, this is just unbelievable, though. John chapter 4, verse 24. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. It doesn't say God is a body or a soul. It says God is a spirit. So, hmm. so we got the body, we got the soul, we got the spirit. So why did Satan so badly want the humans to eat of that fruit? Why was that such a critical turning point? Why was there so much at stake there? Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. <clears throat> First Corinthians chapter two, verse fourteen. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. The natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. I believe what Satan truly craved that day was not the body, was not the soul, but the Spirit. Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Sorry for all the scripture, but this has got to be right. This can't be my opinion. It has to be scripture. Amen. 1544. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. Back to Genesis chapter 5, verse 3. And Adam lived 130 years and begat a son in his own likeness after his image and called his name Seth. So Adam begat a son in his own likeness and after his image. Did Adam have the power to, God said, let us go make man in our image. Did Adam have that ability? No. All Adam did was pass down what? The blood. And his boy was in his likeness and his image because of that. Now, the body and soul was there but the spirit of his son, the, the inner part, was passed down from the father. Stick with me. What's the body without the spirit? James chapter 2, verse 26. <clears throat> James way in the back. Guys doing all right? James 2, 26. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead. So, 
Did God lie when he said, the day ye shall eat of this, you will surely die? That's what it says in verse 17, our opening verse. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. And I've heard it said, well, the, the seed of death was planted in them that day and all of this. And I don't know, but it says, in the day that thou shalt eat of, thou shalt surely die. Could it be the day Satan knew that the day they partook of that fruit, that the spirit would die? And this is the only part, the only likeness that God put in that lump of clay was his spirit. And that's why God came down every day and walked with Adam. And he, he walked with Adam. And he communicated with Adam's what? He didn't communicate with his hair and his nose and his lungs and his calves. He didn't communicate with his soul. He communed with his spirit. The whole process was so that God would have a companion. And that companion would have a spirit that would commune with God. And Satan hated it. He hated the very fact that that made body and soul had the likeness of God in it. He hated it. He said, you're not going to die. He's lying. You're not going to die. Just eat it. You'll be fine. Matter of fact, you're going to be like him. But he knew, man, all they got to do is eat it, and I'll eliminate this. This will die. Why? What happened? In the Old Testament, for sake of time, and I, I encourage you to study it out, and, man, there's lots of fellows. Brother Snipes, man, he needs to preach this and take it off the bottom, maybe put it in the middle somewhere. But in the Old Testament, something happened right there. When they ate of that fruit, there was a separation between the relationship, the fellowship between God and man. Everything changed that day. Yeah, Adam lived a long time after that. But in the Old Testament, I challenge you to study it out. When it talks about the Spirit, it would talk about God taking His Spirit and placing it on someone for a period of time to use them as a tool and then take it off. If the Spirit of God would come upon someone and they would flip out in tongues and all this stuff or whatever, or they would say what God wanted them to say, and God would take that Spirit back away. And if you study it out, it never says the Spirit of God was in a man or dwelt in him. It said it was on him. The Spirit of God came down and did his bidding and then left. Well, then we come to the day of Pentecost. Wow, talk about a study. And all the, the transpires, and, and Christ says, man, I must leave so that someone else can come, and all of this. And my mind goes, wow. Let's look at John chapter 7. I'm almost done, guys. I, gotta, I want to bring this together, and I pray this is a help to you. John chapter 7 and verse 37. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the Scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believed on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given because that Jesus was not yet glorified. Acts chapter 2. Here it is. Man, there was so much that happened, man, when Christ died on the cross and that veil was ripped. Man, and all them priests got notices, they got laid off. <laughs> Talk about unemployment <laughs> skyrocketing. There was so much that went on. You have no idea. 
the battle that went on. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and filled the house where they were sitting. And they appeared unto the cloven tongues like as of fire, and it set upon each of them. And they were all filled. It's the first time you'll see it put like this, with the Holy Ghost. And began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Whew, I don't know what happened in there. It sounds weird. But man, what happened? The Holy Spirit came down, man. He said, look, because of what Christ did, even though Satan took it away way back when in the garden, because of what Christ did, he come and paid that price. And the Holy Spirit came back. And begin, that was the way we could have relationship. That's why we didn't need the high priest anymore. First Corinthians chapter 3. I mean, I don't know if Adam had a belly button, but he had the likeness of God before he sinned. I'll tell you that. And that's what God hated. I forgot what I... Oh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God? And that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. We are the temple of God now. So all those things they built in the Old Testament, that was, that was just a prerequisite of what God had in store. Because we are now, you see, I pulled that off. I, I, that was a big word for me. I Googled that, even how to say it. But now we are the temple of God. We are the temple. Even though you read painstakingly chapter after chapter in the Old Testament of how God told them to build the temple just so the Spirit of God could come down and talk with the priest and that. Man, now I'm the temple. Look, jump over to chapter 6 in 1 Corinthians, verse 19. What, know ye not that, ye, that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own, for ye are bought with a price? Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Notice it makes a distinction between body and spirit. Why does preacher get up here and rip and roar about standards and about how we should look and how our appearance is? Because we are the temple of God. Amen. Don't, don't, do, don't you call it legalism. I'll tell you what legalism is. Legalism is adding something to salvation. Legalism is not the man of God getting up here and tell you how you should dress, how you should talk, how you should act. Why? That's proper for the temple of God. Because that's what the lost world sees. That's what other brothers and sisters in Christ see. When you're gossiping and ripping and, and doing all these things, that's what they see. Lastly, 1 Peter chapter 3. I imagine Satan making his way to that tree and plotting. I imagine God the Father looking down, so proud of his creation, so in love with his likeness that he has a relationship with. Why? 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 4. But let it be the hidden man. So many times we want everybody to see us and how good we are. And our accomplishments and our abilities doesn't impress God. And I love that illustration this morning with the, with the stuff. 
That was awesome. And we get so worried about what everyone else sees. God says, uh uh. Let it be the hidden man. That's what Satan was after. It's the hidden man. Because if he could get the hidden man, he would get this. That's going to rot. That's irrelevant, guys. You can do Zumba every day of the week and, and all of that and, and run 10 miles and eat your carrot juice and ragweed. But bless God, I'm going to keep eating my frappies. I'm drinking my frappies and eating my whoppers. And you know what? I got the letter in the mail saying your cholesterol is very high and you need to double your statins and all this. Man, I don't care about that stuff. Why? It doesn't matter. It's going to, what? Okay, I'll do all that, deny myself cheesesteak subs and pizza and frappies, and I'll live a whole year and a half longer? <laughs> can I get an amen right there? Yeah. I mean, good night. Us Baptists can't sin too much, but we can eat. Yeah. Hey. Good night. <laughs> all you can eat buffet. That's the marriage. That's going to be the marriage supper of the Lamb. Me and, me and Wade's favorite restaurant is the Hibachi Grill. We try to one up each other on plates, and this boy can put it away, man. Woo! And a nice Chinese lady will come over. You've been here a long time. Yeah, that's right. I say I'm getting ready to go to the bathroom, and I'm gonna come back and be here some more time. And Wade says, Amen. Yeah. Give me some. Don't drop the spirit. All right. <laughs> the hidden man of the heart, in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament, that was, a, that was an awesome choice of word that the Holy Spirit told him to write there. The ornament. Think about an ornament. What is an ornament? An ornament is something you decorate on your tree or a nice little medallion you might wear on a necklace or something that you want people to see. You fix something up very nice and you put a nice little trinket or ornament or something on there. And God is telling us, let it be the hidden man of the heart. An ornament of what? Of a self-righteous nose in the air busybody that's pointing out everybody's faults and sins and acting better than everybody else and stabbing and biting and cutting and dividing and doing all these things. Thus saith God, you're wicked. And down in everybody and, 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 and doing all this. Now, what's it say? Amen. <laughs> Amen. You know, I, I, wanna, uh, I can't wait till you let us babysit because I told my wife, when you leave, before you come back and get them, I'm going to sneak them and I'm going to switch their clothes. <laughs> and I'm not going to tell you until they're 18. <laughs> I'm done to do it. So you better put a little sticker on their bottom or something. Baby A, baby B. Jen will too. She'll tape something on her foot or something. Would that be crazy? Addison at 18. You're not Addison. You're Elena. I, these are the things I think about. I, <laughs> and Ms. Barley says he don't pay attention in school. Come on. He's of my likeness, amen, in my, uh, whew, never mind, Wade. <laughs> of a meek and quiet spirit. A meek and quiet spirit. Think about that. Let it be the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit. And I got to thinking about that. God desires for us his, his, the value that he places is not my loud outward self, but it's the inner man the heart. And I think as Christians, we work so hard at taking care of this. Come on. 
and this, this suffers, and this suffers, and then you, you one day grow sin, you fall, all these things. How in the world did I get here? Started back here in the inner man. Which in the sight of God of great price. Satan knew that that was valuable to God. Flesh, God made it because he knew that's what we needed because God is spirit, but we needed tangible hands and feet and lips and hair and ears and all of this. But God puts no value in flesh, none whatsoever. It's like a vapor. It's here and it's gone. No flesh shall be justified in the sight of God. God cares about these. I got to thinking of the different people, and I'm not going to name names. There's many that, you know, preacher, when you're around them, they just they have that meek and quiet spirit. It's, it, you know they walk with God. You can just tell by their demeanor and how they handle situations and what they say. And I think so many times in my life that I dealt with a situation with not a meek and quiet spirit, I dealt with it with this right here. Because that's what I know. That's what I trust. I don't walk with God, and I don't, I don't walk with Him daily, and I don't commune with His Spirit. The, bo- the body begins to take over. And why, do, why does the lost world in such disarray and such problems? I want to be done by 7.30. i got five minutes. Praise the Lord. Why is, why is the world in such disarray? And why does a, a boy walk into a movie theater and kill, shoot 70 people and kill 12? And, and all of, Why does all that happen? Because they're dead. They're discerned. And they have a desire and a need for something. Yes. They, they have a desire to worship and to be loved. And man, all these uh, friends on Facebook, some people that I went to high school with and all years ago, and uh, they're talking about gay pride and all this stuff with Chick-fil-A and, and all of this stuff, you know, and, and I get to thinking about it. And I think, you know, and I, I put it on there. I, talk, I, I made a comment on one of the comments of a comment. And I said, you know, they they march and they carry their signs because they long for acceptance. They know it's wrong. And they miss maybe what they didn't get from a parent growing up or hurt or bitterness or whatever it may be, and they long to be accepted. That's what it is. Why? Because they don't have that meek and quiet spirit. The spirit is dead, and it's the flesh and all the attributes of the flesh, and they live like their father, the devil. And what does the devil care about? Death. That's the end result of sin, right? Is that not his goal? So I begin to pray and ask God of lately to help me in this area of a meek and quiet spirit. A meek and quiet spirit. Why? When I'm around people, I want them to know that I'm a Christian. A Christian is not what I, you know, I'm a Christian. It's when someone else says, I'm a Christian. And man, I've missed this so many times. I have so much regret. You can close your Bibles. Fellas, thank you very much. Just set those boxes over there. Thanks. I look back on all the mistakes and the regrets that I have, which are many. And every, without fail, every single one, every situation that I dealt with, the absence of the meek and quiet spirit was there. It was a fleshly decision. It was in a moment of haste or fleshly anger or bitterness or whatever that I made the wrong choice, said the wrong thing, hurt something, you know, whatever it is, and you can fill in the blank, whatever whatever it is. But that's what it was that day. Satan hated the fact 
that God's likeness was all over Adam and Eve. It's all over them. And he had to figure out a way to, to take that, to separate that. And that's what happened. And then through the grace of God, Christ came and was the ultimate sacrifice for us. And the Holy Spirit came. And I, I tell you, I don't want to grieve the Holy Spirit in my life. Can't lose our salvation. We're not talking about our soul. We're talking about our relationship with God and how we walk with Him and commune with Him. It's the hidden man. Keeps jumping out at me. Hidden is something that's not seen. Something that's not seen. Stop worrying. And the outward appearance is important, but stop. it's not the main thing. The main thing is the hidden man. The time you spend alone with God and, and how you commune with Him and how He works in your heart. That's where longevity, that's what will just keep you staying. That's what will just keep you in the fight. Amen? That's what happens. Let's bow our head, please. Went out to Seoul one in Thursday night with Brother Siri. Him and I got to be partners, him and I and Wade. And I got to, uh, we got to talk to this family and this fellow Tim. I sat there and I looked in his eyes and I could just see hurt and heartache. He was so angry, so bitter at God. And I began to try to love on him and show him that God loves him and has a plan for his life. And I begin to watch the hate and the walls and the bitterness all just kind of kind of come down a little bit. And it's amazing that when we walk with God and we ask God for a burden for souls and we, we ask God to help us to be more like Him, you know what? He'll do it. And we begin to get a love for people and a burden for souls. But... If it's not the hidden man, if it's not the meek and quiet spirit, then the flesh will prevail. And you won't have fruit. And you'll be defeated. And you won't be an effective soul winner. And you won't see the blessings of God on your life. He'll rob your joy. Because it's either of God or it's of Satan. Let's stand to our feet, please. Maybe you're not saved. Maybe you've never been introduced to that Holy Spirit. Man, maybe you need to come down. We'll just take a Bible and show you how you can know for sure. Have the Spirit come inside and indwell you. How about it, Christian? Can it be said of you that you have that inner man, that meek and quiet spirit? Ever be around someone that just commands that presence? When they talk, you listen. I love that about a lot of our folks. I love being around our preacher. You just we'll all be around hanging up, cutting up, and he he won't say much. But when he talks, you listen. Or hey preacher, what do you think about this person or this situation? He says, I don't. I love it. It's awesome. But why don't you come down, Christian, and do business with God? And ask for a desire and a yearning for that meek and quiet spirit, that inner man. Forget about the outer man. It's not important. In the grand scale of eternity, it doesn't even matter. We're going back to the dust. It's the inner man, the spirit, that we got to build and grow on. Many have already come. Won't you join them? Maybe you're here and you say, I'm not saved. If I died tonight, I do not know for sure that I'd go to heaven. But before I leave this church tonight, I'd like to know for sure that heaven will one day be my home. If that's you, would you slip your hand up? Is there anybody like that? We're not going to embarrass you. We just want to pray for you. I see these hands right over here. Jerry, I'm going to have you bring them down right here. And I've got Mrs. DeBelfay. She's stepping out right here. And I'm looking across. Uh, I'm 
looking across for another lady altar. Ashley, you come, if you would, right down here. And we'll put Ashley Roxowitz with one. And Jerry, we'll get one for just reassurance right here. Father, I pray that you bless this invitation. Do a work in our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Our heads are bowed, eyes are closed as Mrs. Johnson sings. You come as the Lord leads, please. invitation and for these that are hearing about Christ Lord we don't ever want to rush the invitation and I thank you for that great message tonight may we apply it to our hearts to our lives in Jesus name amen as folks are still being dealt with here brother Troy fantastic message I mean it I and fellows who just stood there I was so impressed that was great body and soul and then spirit 
Trish, were you impressed? Spirit just stood there. And you did great. That was a great message. Thank you so very much. You could be seated. Brother Jerry, lead us in a quick song. I hope you're not in a hurry to get out. We just want God to continue to work over here. 195, glory to his name. Down at the cross where my Savior died. 195, down at the cross where my Savior died. Down 